welcome to another Naval Action Basics video. In this video, we're going to be covering basic gunnery, Naval Action. Before we go out into the sea and find ourselves a target to shoot at, we need to look into our loadout of the, our ship and what type of cannons we have actually loaded. So, first off, pull up the UI. This is the ship I'm going to be using for this demonstration and the remaining video. When you get into the menu, you can press the cock down here and manage your ship. As a blip, bring up the menu. You get all the information displayed about your ship, about the upgrades, about the skills you have locked, unlocked on it. And if you focus on the left hand side, you'll see your gun decks and what type of cannons you can actually mount on it. Now, each slot has two lines, three actually. First is the number of guns. And if we bring up a pop-up venue, you can see the cannon size limit. Below it is coronate limit. And left click to open to select the cannons. Now for my lower gun deck, I can choose 30 guns, calibers between 9 and 36 pounds. I cannot um, select carronades, however, on my lower gun deck. My middle gun deck is also 30 cannons, ranging from 9 to 32 pounds, and again, no carronade option. However, if I move to my upper deck, you see a change. My cannons are now limited from 4 pounders to 9 pounds, but I now have the option to put carronades on the top deck from 12 to 42 pounds. This is my upper deck. I have no top deck on this ship. I do not have a mortar slot on this one. I do, however, have both bow and stern chasers available. Stern chasers are rear firing guns. And usually you can pack lighter cannons or heavy carronades. Bow guns are forward firing guns. And again, low pound cannons or heavy pound carronades. This is the guns I can select on the ship. Now, before we get into selecting the guns, I need to figure out what I want to do with this ship. This one is a rank 3 ship, means it's basically a line ship, and it's built to take a pounding. So I wanted to deliver a heavy broadside, but at the same time relying, uh, relying on speed and maneuverability. If I go into my warehouse, I can see what guns I have available. And for this one, as I just took off the guns for this demonstration, I have the guns I want on the ship available. If you don't have them, you can go into your shop menu and go into the cannon section and select the type of guns you want. All ports give you the option to buy medium guns. These range from two pound of mediums, three pound of mediums, all the way up to 42 pounders. Some ports may have special guns like long guns blown fields or others. These are required to be either found as part of loot or crafted by other players. So as you're beginning a naval action, your main guns will be mediums. Now for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to buy a single main gun, medium gun, and we'll compare it to the other guns. When you hover over a cannon, it will display the statistics of the gun. Now, this is, this is a 9 pound uh, medium gun. It has a base damage of 65. It has a reload time of 42 seconds. This is the time it takes from the gun to fire and to be fully reloaded and ready to fire again. Then comes max horizontal dispersion, which is 5 meters per 100 meters. It's basically how much the shot will sk uh, spread out over 100 meters. There's also a max vertical dispersion which for this gun is 14 meters per 100 meters. There's a weight listed for each type of gun. 
depending on the amount of guns and their individual weight, it's going to impact how much you can hold on your ship and how fast your ship will sail. In this case, if I'm carrying these medium guns as a cargo, you can see the ship can hold 695. This is counting and uh, sorry, this is counting it as cargo. However, you cannot mount 695 guns on the ship and be able to fire them all. Below comes a very interesting part. There you'll see the cannon's penetration values, ranging from 50 meters all the way up to 1,000 meters. Now, the medium 9 pounder gun will, at 50 meters, penetrate a ship's armor of up to 105 millimeters. And as you see the range increase, there'll be a slight drop off in the penetration value. So if you move up to 250, the penetration ability has dropped to 86 millimeters. Now, what this means is, if I hop away and go back to my ship, on the right hand side, you have all the stats of your ship. You have your speed and your turn rate and the crew, your rudder, pump, cargo hold space, how many slots of cargo you can have. And below is the hit points of your ship for each section, for the sides, for the bow, turn, hull, and your sails. More on this in the combat um, video to come later. We'll be discussing what this actually means. Over here, you'll see the thickness, and that is the amount of armor you have on each side. So on this particular ship with the setup, I have 101 millimeter of armor. My bow is only 63 millimeters thick, and my stern, which is weak on almost every ship, is only 44 millimeters. My hull or central line is 101, and the main mast thickness is 153. So if we go back to the eight, a nine pounder medium gun, remembering that it has 105 penetration at 50 meters, but dropping down to 101 at 100 meters. This means that from ranges over 100 meters, this cannon will not be able to penetrate the ship and the shots will bounce. You can angle your armor to increase the thickness, but more on this when we get into the combat video. So if you remember the stats now, and if you cannot simply pause the video for a second and read through it, if you now compare it to a 9 pounder blown field, which is one of the looted guns you can find in ships, you'll see the base damage is slightly higher, the reload is shorter, the dispersion for both horizontal and vertical is better, the weight is different, now 2.18 tons, where the other one was only 1.95 tons means these guns weigh more. Its penetration, however, is 113 at 50 meters and 107 at 100 meters, which means this gun has a better penetration value at ranges. Comparing again, ending at 1,000 meters for 29, the 9 pounder medium gun, or 36 for the 9 pounder blown fields. Generally, you will not be engaging at ranges over 350 meters unless you're very experienced and doing long range fire. This is gun basics. Now, this is just talking cannons. As I mentioned before, we can actually mount what's called a carronade. A carronade is a cannon with a shorter barrel but a heavier round. Now, 68 pounder carronade, which is the biggest carronade you can get in the game, it has a base damage of 177, takes 50 seconds to reload, and I have a heavy dispersion. It weighs over 5 tons, but I have a fairly good penetration at shorter ranges, but a quick drop off. You'll see at ranges over 500 meters is almost zero. However, the damage done at short ranges with the penetration is very effective. So, these are the basics of any gun. 
if you compare a nine pounder to a 32 pounder, nine pounder have a base damage of 66. The 32 pounder have a base damage of 154. However, nine pounder is quick to reload, is a nimble gun, easy for the crew to move and reload 39 seconds. The 32 pounders has a base reload time of 62 seconds. These guns are of the same type, they have the same dispersion. However, you'll also note that the weight has dramatically increased, reducing how many we could carry and the effect it will have on our ship's weight. Going down, you'll see a great increase in penetration over range and a slightly smaller drop off. This should, at this current stage, give you a basic idea of guns in naval action. There's plenty more different type of guns, special guns like Congreves, Etna Rocks and others. These you'll get acquainted with as you progress through the game. For basic knowledge, know that a gun has a basic damage value, reload value, a dispersion value, a weight and a penetration value. Now, let's mount our guns on the ship. The Admiral personal preference for me is to use carronades as stern guns. Now this is a personal preference, others will use regular cannons, some will use carronades as their bow guns too. I'll get into it when we get to the combat video, why I use carronades on my stern. For my bow, I like to use light cannons, as I mainly use a specific ammo type for my bow guns. On this particular boat, I'm going with all out cannons. For my lower deck, 36 pounders and 30 of them. In this case, I'm using what's called a long gun. It takes longer to reload, has a higher penetration, a bit higher damage output, but also weighs more and requires more crew. Middle gun deck, I'm using 32 pounder blown fields. And for the upper deck, 9 pounder long guns. Now, we're at the open world, and we have gotten into a combat zone. Let's go through our guns, and how to control our guns in combat. I have initiated combat, and I'll now show you the initial setup as you get in. More on how the combat works, how the combat timers work, and how long you have when you get into combat to react and prepare. First of all, let's call up the UI. Just switch off your UI, get prettier screenshots, and just enjoy the view. Use Control H as a default setup or whatever you have changed it into. So, this is the in combat UI. If you look at your bottom left, you have your compass, your ship's position, your wind gauge, how much sails you have on. The amount of crew on your ship, the condition of your sails, and how fast you're going, and the position of your rudder. On the top left is your ship status. You'll see how many guns you have on each broadside, the amount of leaks or critical leaks you may have, and the health of your ship. More on this in the combat section. In the bottom center, you'll have your guns and options. Centrally, you'll see a line of circles, each with a number inside. This is the gun we have on our ship. From right to left, our bow guns, we have our two nine pounders. On our port side, we have our top deck, nine pounders, middle deck, 32 pounders, and our lower deck, 36 pounders. At our stern, we have a two. 68 pounder carronades. And on our starboard side, same as the port side, 99 pounders, 1532 pounders, and 1536 pounders. Now, this is how it looks when you get into the game. Each cannon deck is active, each is loaded as a standard with ball, meaning solid shot, when you start the combat. Now you can change this, if you notice the line to the left of it, 
That is my gun decks. You have a oh one that's a pop up. Bow guns ammo. Stern gun ammo. Starboard guns ammo. And port sack guns ammo. You control this by using the one, G, three, four button on your keypad. Not keypad or your keyboard. Now if you press one it brings up the option to select ammo for my lower guns on the side I'm facing. So in this case my poor guns. Now not the lower deck, but all of the port side guns, sorry. You'll notice that it's the default selected. Ball ammo, round shot, unlimited, more damage to the hull, less damage to sail and crew, and can damage masts. And I have an infinity number. That means I have an infinity, infinite amount of round shot available. Next up is chain shot. Chain shot is a limited resource. It does more damage to sailor as intended to damage sailor and rigging, less to zero damage to hull and crew, and change passes through sails so you can damage multiple sails at a time. I have 35 rounds of chain in total. Next up is grape shot, also unlimited amount of grape shot. Does more damage to crew and very little damage to hull and sails and have very low penetration. And it's a high chance of ricochets. Up next is either double shot or double charge. Now the double shot is a limited count as well, and you have to select this as a perk option. But it does more 15% more damage than a regular round shot, has an increased load time and dispersion, does more damage to hulls and less damage to sailing crew, and can damage mass as other round shot. Double charge, however, puts more powder into your cannons and has a limited count as well. This is also a perk option and it can be increased by using certain upgrades. 50 more penetration than a regular round shot. Increased reload time and ball speed. More damage to the hull, less damage to damage the sail and crew, and can damage marsh as all the round shots. These are the options of ammunition you have. This goes for each and every deck. However, if I go into my stern guns present, three, I know I have carronades on, so even if I have selected double shot, double charge as a perk option, I would not be able to load my carronades with either double charge or double shot. When you're in a ammunition menu you can get out of it by either selecting a different type of ammunition or pressing escape. Now for this demonstration purpose I'm going to load ball on my port side. On my stern I'll keep the ball loaded but if I rotate around facing the direction I want to. Pressing 4 I choose my bow guns Pressing 2 will change it to chain shot as I'm already in combat, it will start to load chain. If I rotate around, you'll see our upcoming target. Double guns 2, selecting grape shot, pressing 3, and you'll see it starts to reload all gun decks with grape shot. It is also noted in the center behind the Below each deck, what type of ammunition you're using? Ball, chain, grape, and ball. As our guns load, let's move a little more to the right. There are five more buttons, or actually six, next to the gun layout. The five, number five button on your keyboard is your repair tab. Six is your sails. 7 is your gunnery crew focus, which we'll get back into. 8 is survival crew focus, and 9 is your boarding. Last one, is the F10 is a braze command. More about this in the combat section. For now, let's highlight 7. Gunnery focus. Allocate more crew to gun control and gives a bit of reload. 
Now, if you look below the cross cannons, you'll see two numbers. 495 out of a total of 589 gun crew needed. Now, we know from before, looking to the left, that I have 649 crew in total on board my ship. As I go through the options, the six, my sailing crew, needs a maximum of 183 crew to fully crew the sail stations. My gunnery positions needs 589. However, if you add those two up, it will be more than 760, which is more crew than I have. So, as each are active, the crew is spread out evenly between sails and gunnery. If I want to focus on gunnery for a moment, and I'm not moving so I can, I can activate and deactivate by pressing the number. If they're highlighted like they are now here, it is active. If it's grayed out, like the number 9 or boarding sections, it is inactive. So if I press 6, I will deprioritize my sails and move crew from sailing to my gunnery. And you'll see the number below the guns increase to 589. Meaning I have a full gun crew on each and every deck and the guns will reload as fast as possible. Another way to control and shift your crew around is you don't want to be stationary and have no sailing crew in a combat situation. If I reactivate 6, you'll see the number of gun crews go down again. We have other options to control our guns. First of all, I can deselect broadside by using the F5 button. You'll see my starboard guns now doesn't display a number, but says R. Hover over it. It should say it's reload. R means that you can still fire the guns, but they will not automatically reload. And the gun crew will be moved away from these guns and used in other positions. You'll also note that over here, the amount of gun crew needed has changed from 586 to 306. So by disabling one or more sides of guns, you can allocate gun crew around your ship and also still keep sailing. Any spare crew you have when 6 and 7, 5 and 8 are fulfilled will be automatically moved to your boarding section. And if you initiate a boarding, they'll already be there and it will be faster to initiate a boarding. More on this in a later video. Now, one way I can disperse my crew around reactivating my starboard gun deck. When I know I'm in a combat, I will mainly be using my starboard gun deck and my port side gun decks. So I can deactivate my bow guns. You do this by looking in the direction you want to deactivate, pressing F5 now disabling my stern guns. Now see my gun crew number is down reduced to 566. I've freed up 20 crew in total meaning that I'll have a better reload. And that is how you can move your gun crew around on your ship during combat. Now for the demonstration purpose I'll disable my starboard side for now and I'll come right back when the light is back up Give in a second now as the sun is coming back up we can start looking into how actually to fire our guns get into gunnery mode turn around your ship to the side you want to be firing in this case we'll be firing on port side guns Right click your mouse to go into gunnery mode and you'll see an arc which is the aim of your guns and you'll see a highlighted line 
go either to the left or right, indicating from which direction you'll be firing. You'll also notice the red bar that's moving up and down as I move my mouse up and down, which is the aim. By firing arc, line of fire, and aim bar. Go back to our controls down here above our gun selection. We have two yellow letters. Protect on R selects our convergence. Now convergence. Convergence changes the angle between cannons, determining the point where the cannonballs will connect. The four modes of convergence: shots to convert at 100 meters, 250 meters, converge when they hit the water, or guns parallel and do not converge. These can each be used to change how you're going to hit the enemy target and be used in certain situations like if you're doing a stern rake, trying to demaster people or increase the number of leaks your broadside will do. For now, as default it's set to water. It will most likely be parallel when you start your first combat. By pressing R, you'll notice the arc of fire changes and the number of converters changes now we're at 100 meters meaning that our broadside will be aimed into this point 100 meters out pressing r once more changes to 250 goes out to parallel there's no convergence the cannons are just set to fire straight out at the aiming point from their point in the ship last one is water which is used to aim and damage the ship around the waterline The next thing we can change is the firing. Firing modes. The firing direction determines from on which ship of the, sh uh, the ship the cannon fire to start to shoot. We have three modes of firing. Cannons can start shooting from the bow, from the stern, or shoot at random. What this means is, as we have a firing arc, lower it a bit. You'll see for now we have random chosen, and it. At this point, we'll start shooting from the front of the ship. But change to the bow, as it was before, it will stay where it is. But if I change to stern, it suddenly changes to starting to fire the left of the screen towards the right. As you use rounds, that highlighted line will change along the ship, indicating which gun in the row is next to fire. Changing our firing back to bow. You have two ways of firing your guns. You can fire a single round, usually done as a ranging shot. You do this by pressing your spacebar. You'll notice the highlighted line moved to the left, indicating that it's the next gun in the row to fire. Another ranging shot. As I move my aim point up, the shot flies longer. And as I turn my aim sideways, moving the mouse, the focus aim changes. If I keep the same aim, but changes my convergence, you'll also notice that the arc in which the gun fires has changed dramatically. Once again, change to 250, and the duration of the round will change. If I go back to parallel, let's change once more. Get to know each and every one. You'll most likely be using either parallel or water to do damage to an enemy ship's hull. Or something like a rake. Or damaging sail, you'll be using 250, 100, or parallel. Or play around with it and you'll get your own feel for it once you get into combat. For now, go back. shooting from the bow at a parallel. Now you'll notice my guns have been deactivated as I press F5 the guns that were unloaded because of our firing will start to reload. See down here the circle that's moving around that is a reload. Once it comes over to a complete circle the guns are reloaded on that entire deck. This also means that my upper deck is not reloaded However, my middle and lower decks are. Oh, 
I can now fire every single reloaded gun as a broadside by pressing the left mouse button. As I fire it, start to press the file, you'll see it fire from the right, from the left, and each and every gun deck is now reloading. However, as we start, uh, talked about in the beginning, we have different types of guns we can put on our ship. If I had put carronades on the top of my ship, there's something to note with these. For this example, we'll use our stern carronades. Our carronades have a very short range and a very curved trajectory. I fire one, heavy ball, short range and very curved. I fire it a bit higher, once again, very curved and short range. Going back to our port side guns, this means that if I have carronades on my top deck, but regular cannons on my middle and lower deck, I might not want to fire these as a full broadside, as I cannot control where the shots will land. By using the F1, F2, F3 and 4, I can disable my decks from being used in a broadside. So if I press F1, I will disable my top deck. Pressing F2 will take the next deck, F3 for the next, and if I had a fourth deck, F4 would disable that deck. This means I can choose which decks to fire in a full broadside. So if I once again press F2, sorry, F2 to engage my middle deck, F3 to engage my lower deck, I can use my regular guns in a full broadside towards the enemy. As I have fired, disengage them, engage my top deck, change my line of fire and my aim, and fire my carronades. And even though you have disengaged them from broadside, the deck will still reload their guns, standing ready for you to use them later. That is the basics of using ball ammunition. If we turn to our bow guns, I have loaded chains in these. The best effect is aiming high towards the top and middle of enemy shipping sails to increase your line of damage. I'll go into proper positioning to get the maximum effect on the enemy sails when we get into the combat video. But for now, I'll just shortly show you how chain shot works. I'll tape my convergence to this one from parallel all the way to 250. That's my personal preference. If I fire out just one shot and high, you'll notice it's not a ball ammunition, but two balls connected by a chain. These will go out, rotate, and destroy rigging a sail, thereby slowing down the enemy ship. Another one can load these on your broadside. Then shots, aim them high. We'll use them when we get into the combat section of the upcoming video. If I go to my starboard side, however, I have loaded grape shot. Grape shot I use as a giant shotgun at close range to kill crew on board the enemy ship. Grape shot works best if enemy armor has been reduced and if you look at the top right you will notice that even though he has no mast his armor both at the bow the sides are full so i have low penetration rounds and very little chance of actually hitting the crew on his gun decks but i might do damage to his crew on his top deck or quarter deck a firing grade shot short range and looks like this. I change my convergence to parallel. Firing from the bow, full broadside grape. And you'll notice I did no damage to his ship, but it actually showed me up here in the top that I did two crew damage. 
If I hold the tap, I can see the total amount of damage I've done in this combat. So, last broadside did only two crew damage out of 240. We'll use grape for more effect when we get into the boarding video in an upcoming at an upcoming time. Now, instead of reloading the grape, I'm gonna change to ball ammunition for my starboard guns. Personally, I always disable my guns as they reload. It makes it easier for me to quickly decide which I want to use in a broad time. When I get out to ranges of over 250 meters. I usually do not use my top deck man powders as I won't penetrate the enemy ship. With quick elite reload, I'll disable my port guns and my stern carronades. Now, let's start firing at a target. This trade ship has kindly agreed to being dismastered and be used as a target practice for this demonstration and your enjoyment. You'll notice that I am at an angle. If I move up the map, you'll see here that I am at an angle towards him. I'm not flat broadside to broadside. This means that when I fire at his ship, I have a higher chance of ricochets happening and a lower chance of actually penetrating because his armor is angled which means my cannonballs will have to penetrate more layers of wood and thicker layers of wood than if I was at his broadside. I'll now show you how ricochets look in naval action. Engaging my 9-pounders, shooting from the bow, single shot. And you'll notice my sh shot hit him, but actually bounced off. Look closely again. Hit, and it bounces. Hit and bounce. That one didn't bounce, it actually connected with the top deck and killed the crew. Another bounce. So, angling actually has something to do with the effect of your broadside. However, shooting him from the rear and from the bow of my or stern of my ship actually means I have the ability to hit him directly in his stern. Now if I change my firing to go from the bow to the stern, I have the ability to aim directly into the stern of the ship, the weakest part. I fire a single round, I remember to aim low enough to hit it. See, now I connected and it uh, did one hole damage. It also took off a slight amount of damage on his armor. Now, if I continually fire into his rear, you notice his armor will be dropping, and I also do crew damage as I'm firing down the length of his ship, meaning any gun cannonballs penetrating the rear of the ship will continue down the length of his ship and continue to do damage to his internal structure and his gun crew. Now let's move the ship slightly ahead and up to his side and actually start firing into his hull. Shooting directly into his rear or into his bows is called a rake. You're firing down the length of the ship and does heavy amount of damage and can actually sink him without having to penetrate his thicker sides. This is especially usual if you're up against bigger targets as you can use your mobility and speed to maneuver around and bring him down by own range. Now we have moved up to position onto his size, not completely 90 degree angle or parallel, but enough that we'll actually be able to penetrate. Now, if I engage my top deck, my NAM powders, have a parallel, I'm firing from the bow. Notice where on his ship I'm actually hitting. Most of my ships connect high and does hull damage. 
not that much because they're only nine pounders. Remember their base damage. Now, if I take my middle deck and fire, see they connect slightly lower. Line, and does increase the damage. They also did so much damage they actually made a special type of damage called reload chop. It means that for a duration of 30 seconds, you cannot reload and you'll be harder pressed to fire back. There are other types of special damage. If I go press and tap, I can see the damage I've done before. As I took his mask off, I gave him a shock. That was sailor shock, which means he cannot control his sails as a mast. Just down, I do have a damage to his mast. You can also set other ships on fire or damage their pumps, their rudders or their magazines. Now, if I engage my lower deck, you'll see the line of aim is lower than before. The impact is lower. You'll also notice the top left corner, the amount of damage done is very much higher. You notice that his armor is almost down to 50 or more than 50% on his side. But the central line, which is his structure, meaning when he will sink, has also taken damage. Once again, if I show you the nine pounders, connecting high and doing little damage, but a quick reload. At this range, they have no problem penetrating the enemy ship. 32 pounders, lower base aiming point, so I need to adjust for it. Now, if I change from parallel, actually water, you'll see the aim point move down. This gives me an increased chance to actually cause leaks on them. Almost firing and waterline, no leaks occurred. However, 15 hull, and I have damaged his pump. Damaging his pump means that his hit points is less than 50%, and it needs to be repaired to optimally function and keep him afloat. Now, 36 panels on the lower gun deck, firing at the waterline, aiming very low, trying to get leaks. However, most of these shots go into the water. Only one shot actually connected to his hull. So you need to be aware of the aiming point and the height difference between your gun decks. Turn back to the other side. I'll show you again by firing first with the same aim point and the same convergence and firing mode. But I'm at top deck first. Notice where they connect to the water. far out. Take my 32 pounders however. Slightly closer and a bit lower. My 36 pounders. Slightly shorter and a little trajectory. The height difference between your gun decks is more noticeable at close range than at long range. Now let's try and change ammunition. For our starboard side, pressing 2 to bring up the ammunition menu, I'll then again press 3 and select grape shot and have them reload. One thing that also affects your ship as you're actually moving is the roll of the waves and it's the push of the wind. See for now, my heel is two degrees to starboard, now back to zero. But if I were full sails, I would have a heel to starboard around two to four degrees, meaning my ship would actually be tilting to its right side meaning that I have longer range with my port side guns than my starboard side guns. Take this into effect when you decide to fire a full broadside. 
As we come back, our guns are all made reloaded. And we have selected Grape Shot for this one. I'll go back to Parallel. Select all my gun decks. And you'll now notice that the enemy's armor on this port, on his port side, is almost gone. And if you want to fire Grape Shot at effect, you need to reduce his armor to less than 30%. And look at the damage done to his crew. This time we did 36 crew damage, meaning we killed 36 of his crew compared to before where it was only two crew. So there's notable difference using grape shots versus an armor that has been reduced then somewhat at full armor. Reducing his crew will mean he's easier to board and he'll also have reduced capabilities to reload and steer his ship. Once again, changing armor. Uh, ammo, sorry, not armor. Exactly. Ammo on our starboard guns. Back to ball ammunition. As the guns reload, when you're firing at ranges, remember to use your shift button, bring up your binocular, and zoom in and out with your scroll wheel increase and decrease your zoom. This makes it so much easier to see if your bolt sides connect or your ranging shots are actually in range. We can also check out our target and see that each and every hit we do actually makes a graphical impact on the ship. The masts have been broken off and several holes a lot in the hull indicating our hits. Now we're finishing off Convergence to water, so I'll hit him low, damage his hull as much as possible. I'm firing a full broadside by left clicking my mouse. You'll see now that we've reduced his side armor to complete the zero, but also his structure. This means that as of now, he is sinking. It also heavily damages his pump, making it red. It makes a slight repair, but it's still malfunctioning. What you'll notice if you look at the enemy ship is actually him slowly sinking in the water. The enemy ship will start sinking as soon as it's reduced to the last fifth of his central structure. It will start to take on water depending on the amount of leaks when he's down to the last two points of central structure. So for now, this target is going down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basic gunnery in naval action. Well, let's give him just one more of a good measure. You keep firing at an enemy until it's completely sunk. And it says in the left hand corner that we actually sunk him. And in this case, indicated by the battle is over, as there's only one enemy. Quick recap, 1 to 4 controls each one of your gun sides. Get out of the menu, oh, sorry about that, by pressing escape. The central line indicates which of your gun decks are active and reloaded. The 7 indicates the amount of gun crew needed and how much gun crew you have available. Your convergence is changed by R. Firing from either bow, stern, or random, or by V. Getting in of gunnery mode is right clicking. Most of you will recognize most of these controls from regular FPSs. You aim by moving your mouse, you zoom by right clicking, and you fire by left clicking. Select your ammo types and just be aware of the height of your decks, the increased reload depending on the guns on the deck, and the different ammunition types and their effects on the enemy ship. Hope you enjoyed this uh, naval action basics video. In the next one we'll be covering a full combat and after that 
onto boarding. Until next time, see you on the high seas.